Great. So good afternoon, everybody. Again, my name is AJ Ehrenstein. I'm Dean of Beyond Barnard and Senior Advisor to the Provost here at the college. My first week back from paternity leave, I'm extremely excited to be back in the chair here at the end of the semester. But I know all of y'all are probably running out of gas. I hope that if you're engaged in end of semester projects, finals, et cetera, that you're getting sleep, taking care of yourself, you're almost there. We're almost at the holidays. It actually if, if you were up in the suburbs yesterday for one reason or the other at my parents house it was snowing so snow is in the air i am extremely excited to about this session this has been a long time in the making i want to express my deep thanks to the laidlaw foundation for funding this really exciting initiative that we will be launching in the next few months uh, i want to thank my colleagues both at beyond barnard uh, and at the Athena Center, and as well at, at the Office of Development. We also have some uh, special guests from Columbia University, some current laid law scholars, so thanks for joining us today. Um, but really, I'm excited about this because the laid law scholars program provides Barnard students with the opportunity to commit to two amazing summers, one of research and a second summer of a leadership in action project that challenges you to put your research into practice or to continue your research in a second summer. It's deeply in line with the way that we approach professional and career development at Beyond Barnard, which is to say that your academic work at Barnard College absolutely can inform the way that you approach what you do outside the classroom and vice versa. And I'm really excited to collaborate closely with the Athena Center for uh, really, I think the you'll hear a little bit today about the, the plans for leadership development programming that are at the heart of the laid law experience and that I think are right in the wheelhouse of our, of our colleagues at Athena. And I see Elizabeth, hey. Um, so I could not be more excited about these uh, opportunities. It's a chance for students across all disciplines sciences, social sciences, humanities, and the arts to develop projects alongside faculty that are meaningful both inside the classroom and for whatever you decide to do outside, um, connecting in an interdisciplinary way with each other for conversations and work uh, across disciplines and with respect to what it means to be a leader in the contemporary world. So I wanna say thanks for coming out. I hope that everyone applies. I really, uh, you know, we've 50 students in the first info session and I'm sure more will watch the recording is incredibly encouraging. Um, but we really hope that this is something that you all are interested in and will follow through on developing a relationship with a faculty mentor, applying to the, this opportunity and uh, hopefully participating with us beginning as soon as next summer. So that's my entire spiel. I hope everybody again is doing well. Take care of yourself as you approach the end of the semester. Come by to Beyond Barnard, have a free cup of terrible coffee. Uh, come chat about how things are going. And I look forward to seeing you all uh, very soon. Thanks everybody. I'll hand it off, I believe, to Christine. Hey everybody, we're going to go ahead and uh, share our slides. I'm Christine Valenza Shin. I'm Associate Dean for Beyond Barnard and have been working closely with several colleagues uh, whom you'll meet in a moment on uh, on introducing laid law scholars to uh, to Barnard College, which is really exciting, as AJ mentioned. So in the room today, in the Zoom room today are myself. And next slide. There we go. Okay, so uh, this is a collaborative collaborative effort, as both the invite and uh, the slides will show you. Uh, the Laidlaw Foundation um, is uh, working with Barnard and uh, specifically with Beyond Barnard and um, the Athena Center. And so on our side, uh, Lindsey Granger Weaver uh, is our Senior Associate Director for Internship Programs, and um, myself, I'm Associate Dean, as I mentioned, will be sort of primary points of contact for Beyond Barnard. Um, and then from the Athena Center for Leadership, we have Elizabeth Werby. Did I say your name correctly? Okay. Um, and also um, um, Umbreen Bhatti, who uh, couldn't be here today, but she's the director of the center. So we basically, as we sort of get up to speed on how this is going to work at Barnard, we're working uh, collaboratively with multiple people and we'll um, see how things evolve from there. So 
Today, we're going to do a couple of different things. We're going to go over uh, program information and structure, talk about the application timeline and some specifics there, and a little bit about finding a research topic and faculty mentor. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, talk a little bit about the leadership training part of this. We are really excited to have two guests from uh, Columbia, Columbia students who completed the Laidlaw um, uh, project over the last two summers, and they're going to give their perspective. Um, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about next steps and, and handle your questions from there. So let's go ahead and so the Laidlaw Foundation is, a, as you can see, a foundation that exists obviously outside of Barnard and uh, does a tremendous amount of initiatives across um, various issues, especially breaking the cycle of poverty, reducing inequality and developing a new generation of leaders, which is where you all come in. Uh, they run several programs. There is a Laidlaw Schools Trust that works directly um, in schools. And then this program, Leadership and Research Laidlaw Scholars. Um, and then uh, they also have a Women's Business Education Laidlaw Scholars subset as well. And they've also built a couple of buildings. So uh, you can definitely visit their website and find out more about the overall foundation. Um, but specifically, we wanna focus in on the Laidlaw Scholars program which is what you would be, what you're here to find out about. So the Laidlaw exists currently at 14 top universities around the world. The majority of them are in the United Kingdom, but there are a growing number of United States um, located uh, schools, including ourselves, Columbia, I believe Georgetown, like us, is brand new to the Laidlaw program this year. And uh, um, I know there's at least one school in Canada, one in Hong Kong, so definitely an international presence. And as it said on the last slide, the idea is to develop a new generation of leaders by funding um, research and uh, focusing in on data-based decision-making and integrity and science and data-based decision-making. So- Good. I'm going to turn things over to Lindsay to talk a little bit about the program values. Yeah. So, I mean, these are pretty much the, the values of the program. Um, say who scholars are, what they believe, and how they act. So scholars are ambitious, brave, curious, determined, extraordinary, fast. And then in some places on their website, there's a G, and it's good because the, the program wants to fund opportunities that are for the social good in a variety of different ways. And as you'll see later on in some of the project topics, um, there's multidisciplinary approach to doing that. And so these, you know, this is what they say, you know, embodying these values looks like. Um, and so I would encourage you to kind of read over these and don't see them as, you know, barriers or a rubric, or this is how we're evaluating. But these are some of the things that like you, you get as a Barnard student, you know, you are all achievers, which is why you're here. <laughs> um, you definitely take risks and you're bold. That is part of the, all of the Barnard alumni groups are have bold somewhere for a reason. Um, you're forging new paths. You are curious about everything, which is you know, the purpose of this liberal arts education that you're getting, um, rigor rigorously analyzing all of the data, experimenting with things, you are determined. We know that, you know, when the variety of different things you all come into our office with, you are determined to be successful. And, um, and you're also very extraordinary, even if you don't believe it, let me tell you, you are. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're fast because there have been a lot of changes. Think about all of the pivots we've all had to do in these past few years and all of the things you had to do before. And so definitely, you know, look over this. These are all check boxes. They're not things to make you feel weird about yourself. It seems to be like, oh yeah, I'm all of these things. And when I apply and do this program, I'm going to show it. And also good, that's there. That's like the over encompassing thing. Um, so yeah, so these are the values. So let's talk a little bit about the practicalities. This is a two summer program. You will be making a two summer commitment if you uh, go ahead and apply, which we hope that you will do. Uh, in the first summer, which for you all would be the summer of 2022. Um, I guess I should note that first years could wait and apply as sophomores, in which case you'd be in our second cohort. But if you're all planning on jumping into the first cohort, the first summer would be coming up summer of 2022. You, uh, The program is five to six weeks of faculty mentored research on a topic of your design. 
uh, interdisciplinary projects that we've mentioned a couple of times are welcome as our topics with an international focus. It's not required, it's just welcome and it is definitely part of the ethos of the Laidlaw uh, program and the Laidlaw network that you're going to become part of that is has an international interdisciplinary focus. Uh, and the general objectives of this research summer are to develop um, your um, analytical, investigative, problem-solving data management skills. So all of those things that come along with um, with research. It doesn't mean that all of your that your research would necessarily be quantitative in, in its entirety, scientific or quantitative. Truly open to all disciplines, all um, areas of of scholarship and, and problem solving. And we'll we'll get some examples a little later to give you some other ideas on that. So then in your second summer, which would be the summer of 2023, again, it's five to six weeks. Um, and this is where you either apply your research um, and or do a leadership in action project, um, generally with an external organization partner. Um, and that's something that we can um, help you, uh, as well as the Laidlaw Network can help you identify that, as well as that um, the University Laidlaw Partners, those 14 universities and colleges, um, offer a selection of leadership in action opportunities each summer, and anybody, any anybody from any laid law school can apply to that. You're not required to, you can develop your own, you can identify your own organizations and partnerships, but there are these uh, pre-existing programs, more of them coming up, I think each summer um, that you have the opportunity to look at as well. And in this second summer, the objectives are to develop your leadership skills, project management, advocacy, and community impact. Um, you know, again, there's a tremendous variety of projects and, and endeavors that, that fall under this umbrella. So it's hard to encapsulate everything, but generally speaking, that's, that's the, the goal. And then in addition to the two summers, there is ongoing training and community building. So leadership training, which for us will be here at Barner will be provided by the Athea Center for Leadership. Uh, so in, in both years that you do it, there'll be a spring kickoff, um, which will gather the, the selected cohort together and, and sort of you know kick things off, as well as do some um, leadership training, as well as talking a little bit about uh, the research focus and, and being a community of research. Um, and then at the end of your summer experience, um, at, or at the in the fall, following your first summer experience, there'll be a, a gathering to do a recap of, of what you all did. And then that repeats itself the, the second summer. So, and then throughout uh, the academic year and summer, there are some um, laid law full cohort programs that you can participate in. I believe there's one required one. We haven't gotten the full details or date on that yet. Um, and then there's many that are optional. So. Money, funding, and support. Um, so the stipend is a minimum of six hundred and seventy-five dollars per week during both summers. And as I've mentioned, it's just it's a five to six week experience. All right, it will be targeted towards the first half of the summer. We do not have the exact dates yet. By the time we um, open the application in January, we'll have that information for you. Um, but you can, you know, so Barnard. Um, uh, typical the pre-COVID times is ending in, um, you know, the semester will end in early to mid-May. Um, and so somewhere shortly after that, um, you'll, um, you'll begin your five to six week uh, research endeavor. Some of that will be up to your individual situation and, and mentor. Um, and then there is additional support to, um, sub, um, additional support for um, supporting housing, uh, travel, other costs associated with the with conducting research or completion of the leadership in action um, summer summer programs. So um, again, we'll have more details on that as uh, as your projects take uh, take shape and the details settle into place. We'll have a process for applying for those additional funds. So let's look a little bit about the app. Uh, look at the application timeline and process. So first of all, eligibility and expression of interest, as was mentioned in the email that you received, all this is open to all Barnard first years and sophomores from any academic discipline. I, you know, um, many of you may not have declared a major or decided on a major yet. In as far as laid law is concerned, it doesn't matter what you end up declaring or or deciding, and even if you change your mind, because it's this, this is designed for all academic disciplines. 
Um, it is a two summer commitment. So if you apply and then if you accept and, and if you're then accepted, um, you'll have to you know, accept your place as, as a laid law scholar and we'll expect you to commit to um, the full uh, two summers of that and, and plan on that. And uh, this, this particular opportunity is exclusive of other Barnard funded, funded internship um, programs in the summer. So you you're not you um, would not be able to overlap this with SRI, which you know, some of you may be uh, looking at as a possibility, or um, or other Barnard funded internships. Each of them is designed to be a full time um, you know full time commitment. Even though laid law doesn't last the entire summer, certainly once you've finished your five to six weeks, you can certainly do whatever else you want with your summer, um, but um, but not a, a Barnard funded internship. And uh, the interest, oops, sorry, uh, go back for just a second. We, we do have an interest form um, and we'll, um, next time Lindsay talks, I'll drop, drop the link for that in the chat so that you can fill that out. And we will also, we're, uh, we're just in the process of finalizing a laid law scholars um, um, info page on our website. So um, we'll make sure that um, um, information about the interest form and, and various other uh, parts of the application process as they come along will go up. So timeline, um, missing some of the exact dates, we'll, we will be filling those in very soon. One exact date we do know is that we would like to have the general interest form um, submitted by January 14th. You can certainly um, submit it earlier. It's not very extensive. Um, so as soon as you are um, able to take a look at it and fill it out, feel free to uh, submit it at any time, but definitely by uh, January 14th. Um, and then in January and February, um, the late late January, early February, the application will open and we will um, have some, at least one workshop, possibly more to, uh, on identifying a topic and a mentor. Um, so that that's part of the application process and you know because you'll have to tell us about your specific plans and, and how that's going to work. The application is likely to be due very early in March. Uh, didn't set an exact date yet, but we will soon. Um, and then that will give us time to look over the applications. Um, so Laidlaw funds 20 students um, in each cohort. So so, um, um, so that will have, you know, obviously how many, how many people choose to apply will have some impact um, on how many interviews we do, et cetera. So um, our best guess at this point is you would apply early in March and then we would um, probably hold interviews the week following spring break. Um, and then as early in April as possible, let you know um, about admissions decisions. And then mid to late April, we'll do the kickoff and leadership um, training. And then your research projects begin in the summer. So the first step to finding a topic and mentor, and I'll say a little about this towards the end as well, is to identify your broad area of interest to at least be thinking in general about what you're interested in, in researching. Um, definitely complete the interest form as we mentioned. And then uh, we will be in touch uh, during January, but early, early, also in the, as the semester gets underway um, with some further um, info sessions on how to identify and secure a faculty mentor. So the key here is that uh, right now you should be focusing on the end of the semester. This is not the time to start talking to faculty uh, about this, um, but be thinking sort of more about your general areas of interest and then we'll follow up with the specifics on how to, how to obtain a mentor from here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn things back to Lindsay for uh, some examples of research topics to get you thinking. Yeah, and so these are very broad and it's kind of covered their, um, some of their self-selected um, topic areas. So these don't have to be your topic areas, but some of like the arts and humanities. And I would say look through, read them, and also take note of the fact that so many of them cover multiple topics, right? So political orientation, environmentalism, those may or may not go together all the time. And so this, a, a lot of these projects um, throughout the next few slides that we'll see um, really show off the fact that laid law scholars are taking this like multidisciplinary approach to, um, to solving problems. And so medicine and health, some of these are words that I don't know, but they really, a lot of these, I pulled these off the website, um, they were mostly from the first year, first summer um, presentations. And so these really amazing posters um, that 
laid law scholars did going through, you know, all of these really interesting and, you know, interesting and also necessary topics um, for social sciences, you know, some of this like racial discrimination and health kinds of things. And so I think as you're thinking about what you could potentially want to research in this first summer, think big, think broad, you know, if there's something that like in your classes, you're starting to see connections between some of them. Um, think about how you can work with some of those faculty members or kind of like start to see what the connection pieces are and figure out, you know, where the gaps are that your research can, can fill. And so again, these are just, you know, a few of the many very fascinating. I was sitting there being like nerding out, reading through some of these posters um, that may say more about me, but, um, you know, think big, think broad, think about, you know, the different ways that things can connect and also about maybe different causes that you would like to impact at some point in the future, because this is a place to really try out ideas and then, you know, maybe start something new and big. All right, we're just going to say a little bit about uh, leadership training and then get to our um, alumni guests. So basically, as mentioned before, the your Barnard cohort. So if you if you um, if you all decide to apply for this cycle, you would become the 2022 Laidlaw cohort um, and you would gather four times over the course of the program for leadership training and other sort of group, um, you know, group and community building um, sessions. So as I already mentioned, in the spring of 2022, those of you who are who apply and are admitted would um, gather mid to late April for um, leadership training and uh, general kickoff and then uh following your first summer um there'll be a gathering in the fall to similarly come together talk about your experiences and make plans for the future and then uh in preparation for your second summer there will be uh, further leadership training in spring of 2023 and then similarly in the fall after you've completed your projects an opportunity to come together and share um, and you know think about next steps um, and as we mentioned there will be other leadership development training some required some optional offered either through barnard or um, through uh, the broader laid law cohort all right so now we are a, very happy, very pleased that two uh, Columbia students, uh, Columbia, I believe Laidlaw started in at Columbia over in uh, 2018. Um, so we're really pleased to welcome Kate Marsh and Megan Rose Forcialotti. I'll let you pronounce your own name and correct it if you want. Um, so just because this is the way I listed you, let me start with having uh, Kate introduce herself. Hi, um, thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Kate Marsh. I am a junior at Columbia College. I am studying political science and statistics with a concentration in sustainable development. Um, I was part of the Laidlaw 2020 cohort, which means that my freshman year, I applied to Laidlaw and I was accepted um, the day before we were sent home for COVID um, to give you a kind of idea of what the, the timeline looked like for me and Megan. Um, we did most of our trainings online and actually did our, our first summer of research remotely. And I think Megan didn't do her first summer of research and postponed it. So we can hear kind of about that, like how it all sort of, uh, changed with COVID, but I, I was lucky, lucky enough to have an acceptance into this program and have something to do, uh, that summer of 2020 when the world was shutting down. Um, which was really wonderful and rewarding. My research was with the Columbia Law School on um, the implementation of climate change laws in New York State. And I was really happy to work um, with them. And um, yeah, and I, I can go on more and more, but I'll let Megan introduce herself. Hi, thank you, Kate. You basically explained the entire program. No, I don't have to. <laughs> Um, I'm Megan. Um, I'm currently also an undergraduate junior at Columbia. My major is environmental biology and my concentration is in statistics. And my research project, I deferred to work on it during the second summer because I do museum work. And so as a result of that, museum work is not digitalized that much. There's been a push to digitalization, especially recently. And so I actually was able to do my second summer project online remotely. However, during the 2020 summer, 
when the pandemic shut that shut everything down, it wouldn't have been possible for me to have done the same type of research just because there was this giant push for digitalization and finding new techniques. So it actually worked out in the long run and I learned a lot of really cool methodology. So I could kind of talk about that experience and being flexible and how important it is, especially during today's times. So the majority of the research that I do is understanding the evolution of sensory systems. So how sensory systems appear. And this wasn't the original project that I was intending to work on, but I think that it's become a lot more interesting than I would have thought I, I would have been doing work on. So yeah, thank you. Great. Yeah, so you both kind of touched on your research topics, but I would love to hear more about both the research topics and then also the links to that leadership and action experience, um, if there were links or if there weren't. Just kind of talk about both the first and second parts of the project, please. Whoever wants to start can start. <laughs> I can start. So I mentioned that my first project was with Columbia Law School doing climate change research. And I actually applied to one of the there when we were applying through Columbia, there was a list of set programs that faculty had already proposed. And I applied to one of those. Um, and I'm a I'm a student from New Orleans, um, from Louisiana. So I was really interested in the climate change stuff because I was grew up, you know, around a lot of hurricanes, you might say. Um, and so I, you know, kind of on a whim applied to that. And it's become something that I've really, really grown into having a lot of passion for. Um, and then, so my first summer I did more legal research and then my second summer I ended up doing um, an internship with the Columbia Water Center where I did um, advocacy and policy research on public water systems and how extreme weather affects public water systems. Um, and I think that's kind of like the wonderful thing about laid law is that you don't have to sort of commit to a specific thing. I was able to do legal research my first summer and do like a much more like advocacy and science based research the second summer um, and sort of try out these different skill sets that I have, um, which was really nice for someone like me who's you know majoring in both poli sci and statistics. I wanted I was able to explore both of those and have like funding because they give you funding regardless of what your project is, which is really nice. Um, and so I didn't do one of their um, proposed leadership and action projects, but I kind of made my own and I was really happy to be able to like explore something very specific with drinking water. Yeah, I'd say that I've had a pretty similar experience in the sense that it's been kind of, I didn't apply for a leadership and action project either. However, I am leading the studies that I'm working on at the American Museum. And so as a result of that, um, being the lead author on a study is definitely something that's very, very unique to have as an experience as an undergrad, because typically you're not leading studies until you're a graduate student. And so I'm learning a lot about how to manage data, how to write research papers, and how to communicate my findings with other people. I've had the opportunity to present my research at conferences, and something else that I've been trying to do more often is also present to the general public. So for example, I was recently invited to speak to the Columbia um, Undergraduate Science Journal, and I was able to speak there about my experience doing undergraduate research. And so I'm looking forward to doing opportunities more like that with my research in the future, where I wanna be able to take the work that I've been doing and present it to people so that they can find out some of the cool stuff you can do at Columbia and beyond, so. That sounds great. It seems like great, um, great connections and like also, you know, shows that it's not super linear all the time. Like you can take what you're interested in or take something and kind of make it your own um, in a way. And so I'm curious as to what some key takeaways are for you two from this program, either related to the research you did or even certain things that maybe you learned about yourself or about things, research things along the way. Megan, do you wanna go first? Sure. Um, so I would say that one of the takeaways that I have is that you can be really flexible and you, even if things go wrong or things change, honestly, a lot of times they change for the better. 
And so I've learned a lot about in particular resilience and how important it is to kind of have hope for the future and to not give up and to persist. Because a lot of times, even though, even though say, so for example, I originally had intended to do a completely different project from the one that I was planning to do in 2020. And I decided that I would defer it because I knew that the project that I would work on in the future would be much better. And that was a pretty big gamble because it then meant that that summer I wasn't able to do research. However, it wound up working out in the long run because the following summer I was able to do a bunch of really rewarding projects. And I was even able to make new connections that I wouldn't have made before because I was able to get involved in a different lab than the one that I'd originally intended to work in. And so as a result of that, I actually got a lot out of the experience, even though it wasn't what I had initially hoped for. And so I would say that that's a really important takeaway that people should have for doing their research projects. Yeah, and I think another big important uh, takeaway that I had from the Slade Lab program is that this university has so many things. Um, they're like, as a Columbia student and as a Barnard student, you have so many like options to connect with all these faculty that are really successful in their fields and really like open to undergraduates working with them, which I was really surprised about. And some of the projects I've been able to be involved in as a Laidlaw scholar, like the, the climate law project, I was originally able to be part of as my, after my freshman year, um, was published in the New Yorker, which was really cool. And I was really excited that like my research that I like did in my computer at like home during COVID, like is, you know, making an impact around the country and like was in different publications. And it's, it's really cool to see that like your research as an undergraduate can really like have an impact and the connections you can make are some of the best connections you can make at this university just by being a late law scholar and by having like one-on-one -on -one contact with a really like well-renowned professor because people listen when you have the name of that person on your research, um, which I don't think you can necessarily have when you're just a freshman in any other way. And so I think it's just, this program really facilitates you like having those connections and being able to like make your research and you know your passions into like a meaningful project. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's kind of a great plug for the university as you get you guys in uh, admissions events as well. Um, but last question before we get back to um, get back to the the presentation, but then also please stick around for Q and A at the end because I'm sure our our callers, everyone on this call is going to have some questions for you too. Um, but what advice do you have for applicants? So I mean, when you were in some sort of info session at some point, um, thinking about things, so like what's something you wish you knew and what sort of advice would you have to give? My advice is just, just apply. I like, I think that is like, it's so hard to get an application together for anything. I like, as I'm like trying to do applications for fellowships as a junior, I'm like, oh my God, do I want to ask people for recommendation letters? I feel like it's so, it's like, there's so many things going on at any time. And I think just like putting yourself out there is the most important thing you can do. And even if your application is not perfect, just submit it and see what happens. And if you feel like that it's not the best you know, application you've ever done, you never know what will happen. And also, you know, it'll give you preparation for applications in the future. So that's my greatest advice is just, just submit it, just see what happens. You know, it, it, if, even if you spend like only an hour on it and then it's fine, just, you know, it, it, I think it's, it's worth it to, to try. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that advice. I think that the Laid Law application is very unique in the sense that they actually do consider a lot about you. They have an interview, at least for us, they had an interview and they also have you write a lot of essays about what, what kinds of things you're interested in. And kind of going along with what Kate was saying about how the application does not have to be perfect. Um, I would say that it's really helpful to kind of go in with a very general idea of what you wanna do and with a pretty general knowledge base of that topic that you're pursuing. So make sure that you know at least a little bit about what you'd wanna be doing uh, research-wise and not in terms of knowing, having read like multiple papers on it or something like that, just in terms of having a general background 
so that that way when you're asked questions at the interview, you can actually answer them and you can answer them in a way that sounds like you know what you're talking about. So that'd be my advice. Thank you. Yeah, sound like you know what you're talking about is probably the best advice across the board for anything. But um, thank you both so much for this and um, hope you can stick around for the end. And Christine, back to you. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we're just going to talk a little bit about next steps and then open it up for questions. So key thing here is to, uh, you know, now that you've come to this info session to actually put it out of your mind and focus on finals, finishing your fall semester strong. And then we hope from what we've seen all semester long, a lot of stress, a lot of burnout um, and anxiety. So we truly hope that you get, uh, take a little bit of time um, to rest and relax wherever that is, whatever it is that uh, brings you um, a little bit of respite from the intensity of this semester and, and the uh, prior semesters. Um, but we, what we do recommend once you've rested and relaxed at least a little bit is to take a little bit of time to reflect. Um, if you're just finishing your first semester here at Barnard, it, this is a great time to sort of think back on, uh, you know, everything you've experienced the last semester. Um, for sophomores, you've been here for um, a year and a half, but, you know, some strange semesters for sure. Um, and you've got your major decision coming up. And so this is, I think, also a great time for reflection. And so, you know, broadly, it's to, you know, it's kind of like a check in with yourself, you know, what are you um, think about all all aspects of the college experience, obviously your academic experience, but also what have you been involved with on an extracurricular basis? Um, have you done an internship? Have Do you have a campus job? Um, you know, think about all these areas, academic, extracurricular, and professional. And, you know, what, what do you think about that? What seems to draw your interest? Uh, what intrigues you? Um, are there issues, um, injustices that make you angry, things that inspire you? You just want to sort of tap into that and, and then think, you know, about the second part of it of if you had the opportunity um, through laid law or through other things you're applying to, what, what do you want to study? What do you want to figure out? What do you want to um, research, spend some time with, and, and really, you know, have that, have that chance to, to dig in on something that's important to you? Um, January 14th, submit your interest form. That's probably the third, third or fourth time I've said that. Um, and then we just ask that you, um, you know, it doesn't have to be all through break, but let's say starting, uh, starting a couple days before the semester starts, begin to check your email regularly um, for information we'll be sharing about. Uh, we'll have a, another info session or a workshop on, you know, developing your research uh, project and reaching out to mentors. And then the application itself will open up um, in late January as well so that you'll know the various um, components of that. We are um, in the, we don't have it yet, but I believe we're going to have a laid law at barnard.edu um, email address. So we'll give you the heads up on that. But in the meantime, you can communicate with us uh, through the Beyond Barnard at uh, barnard.edu um, email. So that's the uh, extent of our prepared remarks. Um, I'll echo thanks uh, for our guests and for being able to stick around and open up for questions. I, Lindsay, let us know if you have any already in the chat and, um, and then if anybody wants to um, on mic. I think I have, do, 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 do. oh, okay, I have a couple. So let me take a look. Let's see. Okay. Does a potential study abroad conflict with one leadership training, for example, in spring of 2023, make one in, ineligible for the program? Um, good question. Um, I think we could probably work around that, especially because laid law does support international experiences. So um, I would say, I'm not going to say any, yeah, I'm, I, I definitely wouldn't want not want to rule you ineligible in advance. Um, we will have a clearer sense of the dates when the application opens up and, and we'll give you a clearer parameters um, and um, and happy to talk it through with you in terms of, of how you'd be able to uh, take advantage of leadership training. Depending on where you are abroad, there might actually be you know other laid law, laid law programs you could connect with. So, so yeah, I, I hope you'll still apply and we'll go over the details you know um, once you have. Um, and then I sent the interest form and I think I have one more direct to me. Does the mentor have to come from Barnard Columbia faculty? Interesting question. Um, 
I think so, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I know that in a similar program, we do summer research institute that you can go outside of the university for, um, for a research mentor. So again, something we will be discussing amongst the Laidlaw, the Barnard Laidlaw group here. Um, and we will um, make sure that that's explicit in the um, application. Yeah, there are a couple of questions in here um, about we have a question about gap time. Can you still apply? Um, we'll let you know if someone's taking a gap year. Um, so that's the question. Um, Kate, question for you. <laughs> How did you connect with Columbia Law? Was it through your mentor? And then also love for your research topic. Oh, so sweet. Um, so I applied directly to his project. I believe he submitted, like my faculty mentor is a law professor and he submitted the project as something that he wanted a late law scholar to help with. Um, but I do think that you know, like as a student, when you're proposing um, research projects and um, looking for faculty mentors, you absolutely can reach out to anyone within the university and the law school's part of that. Um, and so I think like um, the specific place, if you're interested in looking, um, is the Sabin Center for Climate Change Law. And they're very wonderful. I loved working for them. And um, you specifically can totally be like, do you have any undergraduate research um, if you are accepted into the Laid Law program? Or if you're not, you could just apply. I think for specifically for that um, center, I don't think they have undergraduate funding. So you'd probably want to go through um, some sort of funding organization like Laid Law, but otherwise it is a very wonderful place to work with her. Just dropping the interest form again in the chat. A few questions about research, if it will be conducted remotely or on campus. Um, that would likely depend on the project, but it seems as though barring any unforeseen things that a lot of research will be happening on campus. <laughs> this summer. Um, and then do we need a lot of research experience to apply? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, as a first year or even a sophomore after the first year that you've had, really we're looking at your research ideas. Uh, we're trying to get a sense of you know what, how your mind works, what sorts of connections you want, what sorts of um, ideas that you have about things. But this is where you get research experience. So you don't need to have you know, done a whole bunch of stuff because at, at this at this stage of the game, that's that cannot possibly be an expectation. And we want you to really get some, get your hands dirty, get in the sandbox, and get that experience through this. Um, we had a quick question about where the recording will be posted. So first of all, if you've registered for the program, uh, today's info session, you will uh, get a follow up email. Um, I'm going to say tomorrow morning and there'll be a link to the recording and then we also uh, sometime next week we'll upload it to Barnard's YouTube channel um, and we'll we'll make sure to put the YouTube channel in the follow up email as well. And then, as I mentioned, we're working on a specific dedicated web pages for Barnard's Laid Law program and it will um, it will be there as well, in addition to a link to the um, uh, interest form. And then I had another one uh, directly to me if you are a first year. Um, and apply accepted, is it possible to begin the program sophomore year? I'm going to say that's unlikely. I think that if you want to wait and participate um, as a, you know, the summers following your sophomore year and your junior year, that we would have you apply to be part of that cohort. Um, so I think what we'd ask you to do is if you if you do apply this year, it would be with the intention of doing summer 2022 and summer 2023. Obviously, things happen, um, so um, you know plans can change. Uh, but we, yeah, we haven't talked specifically about a deferment. Um, it sounds like uh, was it you, Megan, who were able to do that with with Columbia to defer? I don't know if that was a sort of COVID special kind of um, circumstance. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, what else? Um, let's see. Yeah, I think, I mean, how much scientific and math background? That's not this one. <laughs> um, you can have, a, have zero um, and still apply and still be, be looked at. It's, um, 
it's really about, you know, what do you, what are you hoping to get out of this? That's really the, what we're asking right now, um, especially the first year and a sophomore, um, you know, to be competitive. It's really about, it's really going to be about, you know, have you thought about this? So all of the, the thought exercises that Christine mentioned from the previous slide, the next step slide of like, get through the semester, decompress, think about the things that you're pulled towards the things that you're interested in, the, the places that you would like to make an impact, because that's where a research question would come from. And so if it's something that, you know, you're saying, I want to make an impact in something that you would need a lot of a specific type of experience with, then that's something you can think about trying to gain, but that's not going to be, you know, a prerequisite for this. It's not like a a checkbox of things. It's really, we're looking more holistically <laughs> at these and seeing, you know, what what's there and what sorts of things are you, are pulling you towards this program? I have another question direct to me. Will Barnard provide or release a specific list of research opportunities as one of the guest speakers said that Columbia did or will it be more individually created after being admitted? Um, so we're still in discussions with faculty about that. It's a little unclear at this point how many of them will have, uh, you know, be have a pre-identified thing. It's a possibility, um, and so definitely, this is where the watching your email comes in. Make sure that you're reading, you know, looking for emails from us about, you know, that have laid law in the uh, subject line, um, and keep your eye on that. We'll have a lot more details about how the um, mentoring process works um, and the timing of, um, you know, so. Again, mentioning SRI, which is a, you know in some ways a similar program, you have to have your mentor secured ahead of time. It's unclear exactly how that timing will unfold. It's not quite clear, but we will have further information on that um, in the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, take advantage of the fact that this is the first cohort and just start to you know <laughs> roll with the vibes. But also, <laughs> you have the chance to inform how this moves forward. And so really take advantage of that. Think about, again, the things you're interested, the things you want, the passions, the ideas, and you know, just apply. As both of our guests said, that's the only way that you know if you'll be selected or not is if you submit an application. Um, a couple of questions about cohort um, size. So they're persuaded to have 20, um, so yes. <laughs> So we have fund. We have funding for up to twenty. Um, it does not necessarily mean we, if we have, you know, we we wouldn't necessarily accept twenty because you know there will be a screening process. Um, but um, no, no more than twenty for each cohort. Yeah, and I just want to echo the science math. I mean, obviously, you know, we've mentioned data a few times and statistics and, and that that can be a component of it, but you don't have to have that background and that's not the intent. Research is, it's, it's, it's really in this very broad way. You know, it could be um, historical research. It could be, um, you know, survey research. It could be, um, I don't know, it, just research in its broadest, broadest form. Kate, you want to say something? <laughs> Yeah, and I, I said this in the chat, but one of the most interesting projects that I think got published in a lot of like journals and stuff in the cohort above us was about gender and like Greek classical texts. So, you know, like that had nothing to do with science and math. And she, like, I think presented at all these conferences and like did something in the UK and like she was so impressive and had such interesting stuff. So I think this is like a really good avenue for non scientific research funding if you're interested in that yes <laughs> yeah there's, there's a lot of, of funding at barnard for scientific research and absolutely if that's what you're interested in you know you, you could definitely do it under the laid law umbrella but um this is this research opportunity is fairly fairly un in terms of incorporating all majors is, is unique mm -hmm. so I have another one. Uh, I've accepted an internship offer starting next June. Can I still apply and do the research in August? Probably not, but I don't want to say an absolute no to anything. And I, I you know, Lindsay 
Lindsay put the optimistic spin on it. I, I know that we are a little fuzzy on some of the exact details. It's because this is our first time through. Um, we're learning actually from Columbia and some of our other schools, as well as the larger laid law organizations about some ideas and parameters. Um, I'm going to guess not, but it is possible, um, depending on what you want to research and, and who your faculty mentor was, that we could work something like that out. So, um, so definitely, um, I'd say follow up with us in you know early to mid January about that question, and we probably have a clear sense of that. I don't want you to spend tons of time thinking about your project and your application if we're going to say no, um, but um, but we should be able to give you a little bit clearer answer on that if you want to reach out to Beyond Barnard um, anytime after January fourth, which is when we come back from break. So, so I've got one last collection of questions, which is, can we do the research remotely and who will be reviewing applications? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, I'll answer the second one first. So all the folks on that first slide <laughs> will make up the bulk of the admissions committee mm -hmm. for this. And then also um, likely incorporating like faculty mentors in some way. Um, and then doing research remotely anywhere in the world, this is an international program. And so, it would depend on the project and the mentor. But again, as Christine said, we're not saying no to things. And so that is something that can most can likely be accommodated. Uh, a, yeah, there's a question here. Are most of the projects determining correlations between things? That's an interesting question. I'm, I'm curious if um, Kate or Megan has a sense of that from what you know of different projects people did. Um, I would say that I know my research project is not specifically identifying correlations. I mean, I do statistical work, but that's not the only part of my project. So I would say probably not. I think that you can explore any question. It could be a causative one. Um, it could also be something that has nothing to do with correlations and could instead be about seeing the connections between things or something like that. So. Yeah, I mean, the samples that were pulled off were just the ones that I was drawn to with cool posters. So if it if that comes across from, from the samples and the titles, um, that could purely just be me being drawn to those sorts of titles um, and not not indicative at all of like, this is what projects have to look like. And I was like, oh, that's a cool poster. Um, so it was a little bit like the dog and up, but it's fine. You can think about the things you'd like to do. <laughs> Did we miss any? I don't have any more no. directly to me. Thank you for putting your email in the chat, Megan. Oh yeah. I initially had it on the slide and I said, oh, we should actually ask them if they're willing to be contacted. So <laughs> excellent. Great. We really appreciate that. We really appreciate being able to tap into your experience since you all, since Columbia is more experienced in this than us, um, but we're really excited to, to join join in with Laidlaw and, and have this first cohort. Um, all of you, thank you so much for attending. We're really excited about how many students are interested in this really great opportunity. And we look forward to communicating with you more details and starting to hear about your ideas and, and your questions. So um, have a wonderful end to the semester, a good rest, and we'll pick this back up in January with a lot more details and, uh, and news. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Lindsay. And thanks, Elizabeth.